Hello everybody and welcome back. I am filming the much awaited livestock as well as coral videos of what's in my 120 gallon ultra low maintenance tank today. I've been not hammering away, filming a whole bunch of videos. So this is one that I'm going to get done today because I'm gonna be changing the path going forward. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the livestock that's in this tank. All right, so as I mentioned in my update video of hardware on this tank, I have added some screen tops up here um, because I do have this little yellow guy, the yellow chorus wrasse. Um, a lot of controversy over keeping them in bare bottom tanks. I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for that, but I watch him at night and he actually seems to do pretty good. He finds a little nook and cranny in the rock work and kind of just sits in there and sleeps the night away. I do have my pumps uh, pretty low at night, so there's not much current that he does actually have to uh, fight against. But um, yeah, he's been doing great in this uh, bare bottom tank. It can be done. However, this is not their natural habitat, so it's not suggested to keep them in a bare bottom tank. Um, but I definitely wanted to get these yellow coarse wrasse over a six line. They are uh, a lot better uh, getting along with other fish, a lot more docile than some other ones. Um, moving along here, let's see who we got next. I do have a yellow tang. He is an LJ destroyer in this tank and just goes to town. Right next to him, there's a nice purple tang. Uh, they get along very well. I see sometimes the, they go tail to tail and kind of try sparring with that back uh, pointed part on their tails. Um, that is just normal. They're uh, trying to show dominance and see which one wins. Um, I think they've uh, found out their hierarchy now and are getting along well. Uh, below them, there's a nice sailfin tang. All these tangs do a great job of eating algae all day long. As you can see, there's not really any in my tank. There's some short on the rocks, but um, coralline's starting to fill in really well now. Back here in the back, there is a clown pair. Of course, every tank needs to have one of those. Um, they are actually probably the most dominant fish in this tank. Uh, they do breed every now and then, so they are trying to protect their babies. But interestingly enough, they do not go over into my black widow anemone. They don't seem to bother any of these uh, long tentacle corals or try to uh, host in them. So I'm actually fine with that. They don't need to do that. And they uh, seem to be all right with it as well. Also over here on this side, might not be able to see him. You can just see his tentacles sticking out there is a coral banded shrimp. Um, at nighttime, he comes out a little bit more over the rock work um, but he's been doing great in here as well Let me move back to this side and down in this crevice there is actually a blood red fire shrimp um, he really only comes out when there is food around as well and one of the fish that hasn't really been out yet is my fox face he's a one spot fox face he is chilling right in the middle of that cave there maybe he'll come out by the end of this video um, but they are sometimes not reef safe. He has been really good. I haven't saw him pick at any of my corals. And last but not least is my longhorn cowfish. You can see him just chilling up here, um, kind of hovering away in between the corals. He actually eats quite a bit of algae as well. Um, I also see him going after some brittle stars every now. These are not considered really reef safe because they have a toxin called ostracytoxin if I said that correctly. Um, and they can actually nuke your entire tank if they die. Um, there's been a report of one getting stuck to a powerhead and actually dying. I think that is the only report of one actually nuking a whole tank. Usually most of the time they are pretty uh, easy going fish and don't seem to bother too much. However, I have saw this guy eating my A cans over here one time. I moved this powerhead, the MP40, up a little bit and he was able to get down to some of these A cans and he started going after them, taking big chunks out of them. So I moved this powerhead back down. Seems to be protecting them a little bit better now, but I'm gonna go, go ahead. But I am gonna go ahead and start selling off some of these A cans because actually the one fish that I knew I wanted when I set up this tank was this longhorn cowfish. I really wanted a puffer fish and puffer fish are not reef safe. So if I couldn't have a puffer fish, I was gonna have a longhorn cowfish. And that is that guy right there. And look at our uh, one spot fox face actually did come out. He's right there in the middle now as well. 
And also, I forgot to mention, is my blue tang, also sitting right there in the middle. You can see how well this whole group gets along, uh, especially when I'm feeding. They all come out and uh, always want to get as much food as they can. Uh, I'll go ahead and actually do a little feeding video here at the end, and you can see how well they just attack the food and go crazy. I'm feeding them about every other day right now. So they're keeping everything really in check in this tank. I have noticed the amphipods getting a little crazy. Uh, that's why I kind of got the yellow chorus wrasse as well. You can probably take care of a few of those. Um, copepods don't seem like there's too many in this tank though. Um, and back over here, a little bit of algae above my Black Widow Nem. I'm thinking the tangs don't really want to get too close to the Nem and that's why they kind of stay away from it a little bit. But yeah, that is everyone in this tank. I might actually do a, a quick time lapse video and show these guys what they do when I'm actually not around filming because they can be a little skittish when you come up to the tank but they are coming out a little bit more right now. Um, especially since the lights just came on they're usually sleeping at this time as well. So yeah, I think that is the complete list of livestock in this tank. Hopefully I did not forget anyone. Um, I used to have a few turbo snails. They were doing a great job uh, completely eliminating a lot of the algae in here, but um, they would knock some of these fry plugs off and uh, wasn't really too keen on gluing them back in. And I did find a few that were lodged down in the rocks that had actually died. So I did get rid of the turbo snails and I haven't noticed too much of a difference. The turbos would take care of some of that algae over there that the tangs are not getting right now though. But yeah, everything's doing great. I've had all these fish almost the entire time this tank has been set up. Uh, the clownfish have been around the longest and the uh, yellow chorus wrasse is actually the newest addition and he seems to be fitting in pretty well. Um, I might add a few more yellow chorus wrasse in here, see if they can kind of form a uh, mated pair. Uh, that is all the fish that I'm actually planning to add to this tank as well, so there shouldn't be any more livestock additions unless something really catches my eye. But this tank is pretty much fully stocked, even though these fish seem to maintain all this sort of area. Not too many actually go over into this area, so there is actually a little bit of room left yet. This is a six foot tank, 120 gallons. Um, you can check out my equipment video as well as my livestock about what corals I have in this tank if you're interested in those. Uh, but this tank is an ultra low maintenance tank. Um, so there's not much that I even do to keep this up and maintained um, that you can catch in my other videos, like I said. Until then, I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next videos I will be posting and leave your questions, comments, and suggestions below.